All right, thanks everyone for coming to the Graphs and Matrix seminar. Today, Raphael Seiner is going to be talking about substructures and colorings and directed graphs. Yeah, thanks for inviting me um, and for the opportunity to talk here. So um, I hope everyone hears me well. Um, so the topic is uh, directed graphs, uh, colorings of directed graphs, and also uh, the, the, the relation of the colorings to substructures. So essentially, I will first uh, in the talk, I will first talk about some undirected graph things, which are more or less well known, but still I will recall them and uh, then somehow get to directed generalizations of these questions. And uh, the talk will be mostly like a survey, uh, but at some point I will also have some own results, but I won't uh, tell you too, my, too many proofs, but rather uh, the open questions which are relevant in the area. So, um, okay. So let me start with uh, three famous problems uh, on graph coloring and substructures, which relate the existence of substructures and graphs with large chromatic number. Uh, so in general, we know that uh, computing the chromatic number is an NP-hard problem, so we cannot hope to really get some uh, structural understanding, let's say, of k-critical, k-color critical graphs, but we can have some uh, necessary conditions for these graphs and which uh, substructures they must contain. And so the first uh, Famous problem, of course, is Hartiger's conjecture from 1943, which says that if a graph has chromatic number t, then it must contain a complete graph on t vertices as a minor, so which means I can contract edges and I can delete edges and vertices in order to obtain this graph. And so I will always use this uh, symbol here to indicate that I mean that, that the left graph has the right hand graph as a minor. And then uh, a strengthening of this conjecture would be that if I uh, require this minor not only to be a usual graph minor, but actually a graph subdivision. So uh, a graph obtained from KT by replacing its edges by paths. And this is Hayos conjecture from 1950, which states uh, the stronger conclusion that we that T chromatic graphs also contain the KT as a subdivision. Uh, but um, as you will see later, Hayos conjecture is actually wrong. Um, but still, uh, for, for many years, it remained an open problem, which was interesting. And I mentioned here because I will look at some generalizations of this to the directed setting as well. Um, and the last thing uh, which I will, I'm not sure I will get to talk about at the end, it depends on the time, is uh, induced subgraphs. So the first one was minus, uh, the second kind of substructure were subdivisions. Now we get to induced subgraphs. That's also known that uh, you can have graphs of large chromatic number without any cliques of size three. Um, but uh, if you uh, also exclude as an induced subgraph besides a clique and in a, a forest, an arbitrary forest as an, as an induced subgraph, then it's conjectured by Jaffers and Sumner 1975 that uh, you have bounded chromatic number. And this is also an open question. So um, these are somehow three very important and famous open graph coloring problems, uh, which I will somehow look at generalizations uh, uh, in the directed setting. So let me move on. So um, yeah, the, the general question we want to know is um, which structures we can find in graphs of large chromatic number. And a uh, very much related question to this is also which structures we can find in graphs of large minimum degree. And this is especially re relevant for minors and subdivisions. So uh, this relies on very simple observation that if you have any undirected graph G, that it always must contain a subgraph H whose minimum degree is at least the chromatic number of the graph minus one. Because if not, then this uh, graph G would be uh, chi of G minus one um, degenerate. And you could um, simply obtain a uh, also chi of G minus two degenerate. So you could obtain a coloring of chi of G minus one colors of the graph G. Um, so if you get an answer to the question which structures you can find in graphs of large minimum degree, then you have also um, some answers to the questions which structures we can find in graphs of large chromatic number. Um, this is not equivalent, but it's a, it's a way of obtaining such answers. And it's also this question in the undirected setting is equivalent to the question which graphs um, we can find in graph. I'm a bit confused. Is the chat message important? No, it's just saying hello, right? Okay, sorry. Um, so uh, which structures we can find in graphs of large average degree? Um, because a graph of minimum degree k also has average degree k, at least, of course. And uh, on the other hand, if I have average degree two times k in a graph, then it's easy to show that it contains a subgraph of minimum degree k. So qualitatively, these questions are equivalent. And um, particularly for the Hartwig and Hyatt problems, the people have soon moved on also to study these questions, uh, which uh, graphs I can find as a subdivision and as a minor in very dense graphs, because it's related to Hyatt and Hartwig's conjectures. 
So I will give a short uh, overview of the historical results uh, on Hartiger and Hayosh conjecture. Uh, and so the first function which was found, which shows that a graph without a KT minor or without a KT subdivision has bounded chromatic number were obtained by Wagner and Jung with a very elegant argument. So they proved these, these bounds of two to the T minus two for the KT minor free graphs and two to the T squared over two for the KT subdivision free graphs. And the idea is this layering idea, which probably most of you have also seen at some point. So I only have this uh, small picture here. So you, uh, of course, can reduce to the case that the G is a connected graph. Then you pick some arbitrary vertex V in this graph and you make a BFS layering. So you have, you have, have the vertex V and you have all the neighbors of V, then you have all the vertices at distance two from V and so on. And then the idea is that uh, there must be a layer. So uh, I call these sets layers, um, these distance sets, um, which has chromatic number at least half the chromatic number of the graph of the total graph because if not then uh, i could somehow color uh, so suppose every layer is colorable with k minus one colors let's say then i could color each uh, layer with a set of uh, k minus one distinct colors and alternate between disjoint color sets a and b uh, on uh, consecutive layers as you can see here and then that's a proper graph coloring and i'm using at most uh, two times k minus two colors so um, if the graph has chromatic number 2k then uh, it must contain a layer with chromatic number k and um, that means that you can so sort of prove these claims by induction. So you can say that if I am KT minor free, then um, it's an easy observation that uh, somehow every one of these layers must be KT minus one minor free because for example, if this layer contains a KT mi minus one minor, I could somehow add paths, these shortest paths going from V to each of the branch vertices of this minor or the branch sets of this minor and somehow um, add uh, this V itself as a, and the connecting paths as a new branch set. So this each layer will be kt minus one minor three, and then you can apply this bound two times two to the t minus one um, to get this this inductively. So this is a very easy proof, uh, but also nice. And uh, this was then also generalized to the minimum degree setting by Mader uh, later on in '67, who proved exactly the same bounds, only replacing chromatic number by minimum degree. But this is a bit more involved. Um, okay, so this was uh, what was the best was known for a long time. And then Catlin in 1997 found the first count example to higher conjecture, starting from t equals seven. Uh, and actually, I think it's still open where the higher conjecture is true for five and six, t equals five and six. And for t at most four, it's equivalent to hard figure and therefore true. Um, yeah, so then also higher conjecture uh, was proved to be very wrong by Erdos and Feitlovich in 1981, who proved that it's wrong for random graphs. So Erdos really random graphs with one half probability. And uh, also the same argument shows that you, in a KT subdivision free graph, you can have graphs of almost quadratically large chromatic number, which is T squared over log T. So this is the best law now found, which is known for KT subdivision free diagrams on their chromatic number. Uh, and then uh, Kososka and Thomason both showed that this uh, bounds, exponential bounds by MADA for the minimum degree setting can be improved by a lot. So they proved an almost linear bound of T times square root log T on the minimum degree which is required to cause KT as a minor. And also this is asymptotically tied by looking at random graphs. Um, so this is somehow uh, also proves the same bound of course for the chromatic number, but uh, doesn't give the required the T bound by Hartwig's conjecture. And for uh, many years, this was the best which was known. Um, uh, for the KT subdivision free setting, uh, also a tight bound was obtained later on by Bolo, Bush, and Thomason and independently by Komlodge and Sinelody who proved that here the order of magnitude is quadratic. So it's you have minimum degree quadratic in T, you must contain a KT subdivision. And this is also tied by considering complete bipartite graphs. Um, and now, as you all will know, I guess uh, there was some breakthrough in the 2019 and 2020 by Noreen, Fossil, and Song, who improved this order of magnitude of T times square root log T by raising the log T in, instead of one half to one quarter. And uh, Fossil further improved the method and showed that you can actually get log log T to the sixth as, an additional, as the additional factor, which is, I think, currently the best known so far. Um, so this is the state of the art on Hartwig's conjecture. And I just wanted to give you somehow this uh, historical overview to see that how, how you get uh, with the method with, with which you get the exponential bounds also. Um, now I will finally move on to the topic of this talk, the digraphs. And of course, I first have to give you some definitions to uh, properly extend those questions by Hayosh and Hartwig uh, also to the directed setting, because I think you don't know how what a chromatic number is and also what are minors and subdivisions. So let me start by the chromatic number. So the concept of coloring for diagrams I'm using here was introduced by Erdős and Malara in around 1980, 
And here the idea is that you vertex color the graph uh, and you uh, are allowed to uh, color adjacent vertices with the same color, but the obstruction you are avoiding are monochromatic directed cycles. So you are not uh, allowed to enclose a directed cycle in one color pair. So you have a partition to acyclic subtype graphs. And the smallest such number is the dichromatic number I denoted by this arrow on top of the chi. And to give you some very simple examples, so if you have a directed cycle, then the dichromatic number will be two. You can simply partition in, in, it into two directed paths. The complete digraph on T is denoted with this double arrow on top of it. Um, so you have uh, here some examples. For example, this is the K4, where you have connecting edges symmetrically in all directions. It needs a, a T colors because adjacent vertices with the same color would already form a monochromatic die cycle. So this is not allowed. And if you take, for example, a transitive tournament or any ACK diagraph, its diagrammatic number is clearly one because you don't have directed cycles. So this is a coloring notion which is now nowadays very popular and studied a lot. And uh, also somehow is the most popular notion which uses the directed structure. Of course, you can also look at the chromatic number of, a, uh, of the underlying directed, uh, undirected graph, but uh, then you don't, uh, will not retrieve anything or use anything from the structure of the diagram. Okay, so um, then I have to also talk, tell you what is the minor and the subdivision concept. And um, here it's uh, even, so here we have many choices uh, what we can look at because I have uh, four different uh, uh, minor notions used in the literature, which all kind of make sense. So let me give a brief overview. So the very first one, which is maybe the most natural one, extends the undirected graph minor where we, uh, graph minus where we say we can contract edges simply to digraph. So you simply say, okay, take subgraphs and contract arbitrary edges. Or in other words, your branch sets of the minor, they are weakly connected sub digraphs. This was uh, studied by Jagger in 1996. And uh, he, as we will see later, proved the generalization of the result by Kososchka and Tomason for the weak minors. So average degree T times square root log T also forces a weak KT minor. But somehow weak minors aren't really good if you care about directed cycles or directed paths, because in your branch set, the, the edges might be oriented in such a way that you are acyclic and you don't get any nice paths or so. For example, large transitive tournaments also contain uh, large um, complete digraphs as minors. And so uh, if we care about directed substructures, then it makes more sense to require more structure from these branch sets. And one such idea is uh, to use strong minors, also introduced by Jagger and uh, studied by Kim and Simo and Aksinovich et al. recently, where we say that the branch set should be strongly connected. So in other words, you can take subgraphs and contract directed cycles into single vertices. And then you at least can route directed paths within the branch sets. And then uh, the, the next notion, which was already uh, talked about here in this uh, seminar by Stefan Kreutzer, um, when he talked about directed free width and tangles, um, was introduced by Johnson et al. in 2001 uh, to study directed free width. And uh, here the idea is that your branch sets, uh, so this is a bit special, but the branch sets look like butterflies. So that's why they're called butterfly minus. The idea is that you can, of course, always take subgraphs. And the things which you may identify into single vertices, they look like this, so you have an inner arborescence rooted at some vertex here in the middle, an outer arborescence rooted at the same vertex, internally disjoint, and you, you join them. And then also the rule is that somehow in the, if you want to contract such a branch set, then uh, the only incoming edges might be at the vertices on the left-hand side, and the only outgoing edges of this branch set might be at the vertices of the right-hand side. And the idea is that if you can contract such a thing, you keep control of how directed cycles and paths go through your diagram. So if you contract this and you will find a directed a cycle, for example, through this uh, contraction vertex, you can still expand it into a directed cycle in the whole digraph, which is not possible, for example, for the weak minor. So this is some uh, more restricted uh, branch set as well to keep some directed structure. Um, and the last one, which is maybe the most natural one, the least confusing one, are topological minors because they have exactly the same definition as in the undirected graphs. So you simply subdivide edges by replacing directed arcs by directed paths. And I don't know who introduced this first. I think this is studied a lot, so it's also very natural. But um, to conclude somehow this overview of this uh, minor notions, uh, I have this uh, short uh, uh, diagram of this hierarchy, which says that uh, the strong minor notions and the butterfly minor notions are not comparable directly, but clearly strong minors and butterfly minors are somehow more special than weak minors. So every strong minor is also weak minor and every butterfly minor is also weak minor. And of course, it's easy to see that topological minors are also subcases of butterfly minors, but they are all not equivalent. So these are this is somehow the, the, the most uh, uh, studied notions in the literature, and I will uh, talk only about this, these in, the, in this talk. Um, right. 
uh, before I get finally to this question, uh, which uh, minors and subdivisions we can force in digraphs with large diagrammatic number, for example, let me just uh, say some words how these uh, things generalize the underrated setting. So they are proper generaliz generalizations of the setting, because what you can do is you can look at symmetric digraph. For example, if I have this underrated C5, I can look at its phi orientation where I've replaced every edge by forward backward arcs, uh, as you can see here. And then first of all, the diagrammatic number of the symmetric digraph is the same as the chromatic number of the original graph. Because if you, as before, if you color two vertices which are adjacent with the same color, already the cycle of length two would be monochromatic, which is not allowed. And secondly, for all the first three minor notions, so butterfly minors, weak minors, and strong minors, uh, minor containment in the underrated graphs is equivalent to minor containment in the symmetrical orientations. And only the topological minors are, of course, different because they clearly generalize the underrated topological minors. So for the graph minus we have three possible generalizations and the topological minus only the canonical one okay so i hope that you uh, are still following me and that i can now get to the question i want to discuss in this talk so uh, which, which is simply the same as for graphs so which structures can we fi find in graphs whose diagrammatic number is very large and uh, in particular let's first look at subdivisions and minors and then we can make the same observation as uh, for the underrated graphs that uh, a diagraph Whose diagrammatic number is, is uh, some value k, must contain a subgraph whose minimum out and in degree is at least k minus one. Again, uh, with a similar greedy procedure for the color. And uh, so you can again try the same approach uh, as was done, for example, by Kostoschka and Thomason for Hartwig's conjecture, looking at the average degree or the minimum degrees, uh, which structures can we find in diagrams of large minimum out and in degree. Um, but I can already tell you now that somehow this question will not be as powerful as uh, was in the underrated setting. There are some negative results, but still some nice open questions, and I will uh, tell tell them to you soon. So um, also, there's a, a loose other question which I wrote down here, which says, uh, which asks about the average degree. But uh, already intuitively, it's uh, it's easy to see that this is not the right question for direct graphs. So first of all, uh, I can simply take a transitive tournament whose average degree can be arbitrarily large, but which does not contain interesting subdivisions because it's acyclic. So it doesn't, for example, contain a directed cycle and therefore no subdivision of a, of a K2 oriented by oriented K2. Um, so let me make this more precise. Why density is not really interesting, it's actually even worse. Not only can we uh, not force directed cycles as minors or subdivisions, but actually the only things we can force are forests, special forests which are called anti directed. So these are forests where somehow all edges are oriented from the one color class to the other one, as you can see in this picture above. And uh, the, the simple examples would show why you cannot force anything else. And of course, I, we can agree that these graphs aren't really interesting. So what you can take is a, a graph which is bipartite, has very large density and very large girth. So they exist because uh, we know that by, by adage, graphs of large uh, the chromatic number and large girth exists. So they have subgraphs of large density, and then uh, you can make them bipartite by taking a max, a, a max cut, for example. Then if you have such a graph of these properties, you can orient all edges from the first color class to the second one. And you already see that this doesn't contain any directed graph of length two. So certainly in a subdivision, every subdivision must, must be actually a subgraph. We cannot <coughs> have any uh, longer paths. And also for the minor, something similar is true. The minors must also be <coughs> uh, subgraphs. Um, at least for, this is at least true for all minor notions except the weak minors, for which I already told you that Jagger proof actually that average degree is sufficient to force the weak minor. But for all the other minors uh, notions, strong minors and butterfly minors, <clears throat> we cannot even force a directed path of length two, and we cannot force any short oriented cycle as a minor because we have a uh, have strict alignment of large curve. So if you have any graph which contains either a cycle or a directed subpath of length two, it will not be forcible in digress of large density as any of the, in any of these minor notions. And uh, therefore we, only, we are only left with, the, with these forests. So that's why density is not the right question here. And so the next thing we can ask, okay, what about this minimum degree question? Can we generalize the results by Kostoschka and Thomason and so on to the setting? Uh, and uh, first, I think uh, I, in some very old paper, Mada actually saw this as a conjecture that he believed that diagrams of very large minimum out degree uh, contain arbitrarily, uh, arbitrary diagrams as, as subdivisions, for example. Uh, but uh, this was uh, disproved by Thomason in 1985 with a very nice construction uh, he, he proved that uh, you have diagraphs dk of out and in degree at least k for every number k, but all directed cycles in these diagraphs have um, 
oh, sorry, this is a mistake. All direct targets in this diagram have odd length. Um, even would be easy by taking bipartite graphs, but uh, all these cycles have odd length, so they avoid even cycles. And uh, then you can see that uh, if you, for example, of the, uh, look at this complete diagram of order three, no matter how you subdivide it, this is an easy exercise, you always have a direct cycle of even length. So hence, Thomas's construction shows that you cannot force K3 as a subdivision in these diagrams dk. And um, Axinovich and I recently also considered these strong minor notions. Um, ah, sorry, uh, this is also known for butterfly minors. This was shown by Seymour and Thomasson that also butterfly minors uh, of these diagraph K3 are not contained in diagrams of large um, out and in degree. Uh, and for the strong minors, which are different, Axinovich and I'll show that exactly the same construction with a different argument also shows that K3 cannot be forced as a strong minor by minimum out and in degree. So these are very negative results because, okay, we can force a K2 because it's simply a directed cycle and the diagraph of minimum out degree one contains a directed cycle. So we don't have this acyclic diagraph problem, but still we cannot really force much more. And there are some other ne uh, negative results which show that as soon as you have few directed cycles which interact in some way, uh, you will not be able to force it. For example, Thomasson had another construction showing that you cannot force in diagrams of arbitrary large minimum out degree three directed cycles each meeting at one vertex and which are otherwise disjoint which is quite surprising, I think, but uh, so there are also some constructions like this. Uh, you actually, uh, and then there's some other construction by De Vos et al from 2011, who showed that in a diagram of large out degree, you must not contain two vertices with two different paths going from the left vertex to the right vertex and two other different paths going from the right vertex to the left vertex, which is also quite surprising because you would think that um, su such a thing should be possible uh, looking at the undirected graph setting, but somehow you see here that as soon as you have directed cycles, which you have in all of these three examples, you essentially cannot do much. And all these, um, yeah. So these, these, all these are negative results, which is a bit depressing, but uh, there is some positive result, which is quite well known. Uh, Thomas and proved in 1983 that a diagraph of very large minimum out degree, some factorial here, contains K disjoint directed cycles. So at least disjoint directed cycles we can get. We cannot get that they meet at some vertex or something, but we can get disjoint directed cycles, which is very, stupid diagraph as a subdivision because it simply consists of a distant union of K2s. Um, but, uh, oh, sorry. Uh, but already in this setting, there are some open questions, which uh, uh, is also quite prominent by Bermond and Thomasson from 1981, which says that the precise degree bound is 2K minus one for this problem, which is still open. So there are some linear function is norm, which is 18 times K by Bucic, I, I think, from 2018. Um, but this is uh, also still a very famous open problem. And I think it's, it's important to emphasize this that many people think about this because I, I mean, it's, it seems like a very simple problem for undirected graphs. Uh, this is not such a hard problem. Um, and also, then Mada in uh, okay, so I somehow had this. This is kind of an interruption here because I wanted actually to to show you these examples and say that uh, you can see that because all of them contain directed cycles and we cannot force them. It's natural to think about whether we can have also some acyclic obstructions or whether. Uh, it's only the problem that we have these directed cycles which we want to force. And this is actually was a thought by Mada from 1985 who conjectured that somehow only directed cycles are a problem if you want to force something as a subdivision. And he said that if a, di a diagraph F is acyclic, then there exists a number D of F such that diagraphs of large minimum out degree at least D of F contain F as a topological minor or as a subdivision. And uh, this is a very nice conjecture because Although we cannot recover the whole uh, strength of Mahler's re result for anaerobic graphs that we can get with large minimum, minimum degree arbitrary subdivisions of complete graphs, we could still at least get uh, subdivisions of uh, transitive tournaments, which are still, okay, they are acyclic, they don't have directed cycles, but they are still very dense, uh, uh, well connected, let's say. And they, this such a result would be certainly useful for, for several problems in direct graph theory, because you can embed this joint paths, you can route through the, these subdivisions and so on. Things you can do in the anaerobic setting as well. Uh, unfortunately, this uh, question is also widely open, and I really want to emphasize this. This is one of my, I think it's all, also an open problem garden, but it hasn't received much attention uh, since uh, it was proposed, and it's quite an old question right now. So what is really a pity is that it's not even known for small values like K5, for example, for the transitive orientation of the K5. It's not known whether this such a function exists. Mad himself proved that for K4, minimum all degree free suffices, but already this is quite a complicated proof. So um, this is quite a nice problem, I think. And uh, I also want to, so the only work actually I could find on this problem besides some words of Mada himself, uh, who proved, for example, that in a diagram of large minimum, minimum out degree, you must contain many disjoint paths uh, in one direction from one vertex to another. 
So this is somehow a partial result to this conjecture. Apart from this, I couldn't find anything in the literature. And the only thing which was very recently done in uh, on the archive in 2016, and now published 2019 by Abul Kay et al, was uh, that they also considered this problem and proved some special cases. But uh, special cases, not in the sense that they increase uh, here the value like K5 or K6 or so, but they said, okay, this problem seems too difficult. Let's look at some sparse acyclic diagrams and see whether the conjecture is true at all, even for those. So if F is very sparse, can we show that it can be false as a subdivision? And they propose two uh, appar apparently very simple conjectures. The first one concerns a special case that you have an orientation of a forest. And the second one concerns, concerns the case that you have an orientation of a cycle. So not ne 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 necessar necessarily a directed cycle, but simply some orientation of a cycle. And conjecture one, they prove for out and in arborescences. Um, but uh, also this is not very easy actually. And then conjecture two was uh, proved by me and uh, Leo Gishpolina and Tibor Sabo recently, uh, which also wasn't an easy proof. So it's really surprising that these problems are so difficult. And I especially conjecture one, because it still remains open widely. Uh, I want to somehow emphasize here as an open problem uh, because, uh, yeah, for example, it's not known whether a diagram of uh, minimum R degree 10 billion contains a subdivision of this forest here, which is embarrassing. So we should somehow, um, yeah, more people should think about these problems and, and make some progress or show that such a thing is not possible and Mahler's conjecture is wrong, but something should be should be done here, I think. So um, that's that's the set the situation for the diagram of large minimum degree. It's uh, not much known, but um, yeah, some partial results for sparser diagrams. Okay, so now let me move on to the dichromatic number. So uh, actually, this was the motivation in the first place that we want to know that we want to generalize hard figures and higher conjecture to this setting. So what can we say about the dichromatic number of a diagraph which excludes as a minor, as some topological minor, a diagraph of large, uh, a complete diagraph? And um, also, this question was raised by Abulki et al. in 2016. And uh, what they proved is, first of all, that at least qualitatively this works, which is not, not clear because, I mean, for unerratic graphs, we, um, the, the main results uh, all work via this minimum degree and degeneracy coloring, which we can see by these results, uh, negative results by Thomas and so on, don't work in the directed setting. So we cannot use this minimum degree condition on its own. But instead, uh, they recover this layering argument, which I showed you in the very beginning for unerratic graphs by doing a BFS layering in a diagraph. So starting from some vertex and uh, making these out layers at distance one, out distance two, and so on. And then you can again show that if this diagraph has dichromatic number two times K, one of these layers has dichromatic number K and with the same argument essentially. And uh, the argument gets a bit more complicated because you have to do a second layering within the layers, uh, an in-layering. And then you can show that uh, with an exponential bounds like four to the T squared, you can force any complete diagram of order T as a subdivision. That's what they did. And because subdivision is more special than butterfly minor, you can also force butterfly minus with this idea. Um, so here the idea for the coloring would be that somehow if you al uh, color alternately these layers, because you have no edges uh, jumping in forward direction over one layer, um, even if some, uh, uh, if you have a monochromatic directed cycle, it could not intersect different layers because it would have to use at least one forward edge, uh, which get, would be exactly such an edge which jumps over one of the layers. So um, somehow here the out BFS is sufficient because we also only care about direct cycles. And so the cycle must really go in both directions. Um, and uh, somehow this layering argument, which is, I think is very elegant, was also recovered by Axinovich et al. recently in their paper on the strong minus, where they proved that also an exponential function now with a t in the exponent forces a strong kt minor. So uh, we have the following situation. We know average degree of t times square root of t is sufficient to force a weak minus, and this is tight. Um, so the same is also true for the diagrammatic number. And for the butterfly minus and the topological minus, we have this 4 to the t squared bound. And then for the uh, strong minus, we have the 4 to the t bound. So this was somehow the situation like half a year ago. And uh, then also I was get, got very interested in these problems. And um, together with Tamas uh, Misaros from FU Berlin, I recently could, at least for the butterfly and strong minus, could improve the bound by uh, showing that it's the same asymptotically as for the underregulated setting. So uh, here you have this t times log of t to the six, which is simply taken from the possible result. And uh, this is the only proof I will give in this talk because it's, I think, very elegant and shows you how somehow these diagrams on under, uh, underrated and directed graphs, uh, coloring and minor concepts interact. So uh, the idea is simply to show that actually the asymptotic functions uh, to force the kt minor in a 
f of t chromatic graph, let's say, and a, a kt complete digraph uh, of order t minor and a digraph of diachromatic number f of t, uh, these two functions, they are uh, related only by a factor of two. So we, what we prove is this claim here that for every directed graph d, there exists an undirected graph g such that two conditions hold. First of all, the diachromatic number of d is at most two times the chromatic number of g. So if d has very large diachromatic number, g also has large chromatic number. And secondly, if d, contain, uh, d contains uh, the bi orientation of g replacing edges by symmetric arcs, is a strong minor. And um, I will first prove this result only for the, for the strong minors and uh, later say quickly how this follows from the butterfly minors as well. Um, right, so let's uh, maybe, okay. Uh, yeah, so, so why does this somehow prove this result? Because, okay, if you have now a diagram whose diagrammatic number is of at least of this order t times dot dot t to the sixth, then this g will have chromatic number at least of this order. So it will contain kt as a, as a minor, as an undirected graph minor, which means that this bi orientation of g will contain this uh, complete diagram of order t as a strong minor. The idea of this is simply that uh, if you have a branch set which is uh, connected in a graph, and you take the bi orientation, it becomes a strongly connected uh, branch set. So this is what is required for the strong minors. And then by transitivity, also the d must contain this complete diagram of order t as a strong minor. So this is what we have to prove. And the idea is uh, actually very simple. So what we do is we first quickly uh, partition the vertex of the diagraph into some number of sets, which, I, which are called xi. So what I uh, define is that x1, I take as an inclusion-wise uh, inclusion largest subset of the vertices, such that the induced subdiagraph of this vertex set is uh, two colorable. So in the uh, acyclic sense, partitionable into two acyclic subdiagraphs. And the induced subdiagraph is also strongly connected. And this is well defined because in the worst case, I can take a single vertex or let's say a single directed cycle if it exists. Um, so this is always well defined. And then if I have chosen x1, I choose x2 as a larger subset with the same properties disjoint from x1, x3 as a larger subset disjoint from x1 and x2, and so on. And because I always take at least one further vertex, I get in the end a partition of the vertex set of the diagraph into sets x1 to x1. And I will always somehow uh, have these bubbles going from left to right. To, uh, so x1 is always to uh, the leftmost back. And Xn is always the rightmost back, just to make the picture somehow more intuitive. Because um, the idea after we have constructed this layering is now to define this graph G simply by contracting essentially these, these bubbles. So um, formally, we, we have a vertex set of G labeled by 1 to M corresponding each to one of these sets here. And we have between two labels I and J and H. If between X, I and XJ, we have arcs going in both directions. So there exists an arc with tail in XI and head in XJ and vice versa as well. And then um, if, you, if you look at this definition, it's uh, sort of directly clear that D contains a, as a strong minor the bi-orientation of G. Because these XIs, they are by definition strongly connected sets. So um, we can sort of contract them into single vertices. Then we get a super graph of G, of the bi-orientation of G, because for every edge in G, we have uh, edges going in both ways between the corresponding vertices. So we can simply delete the, the edges which are unnecessary to get the bi-orientation of G. So this is the first property we wanted to establish for this G. And the second one is that we proved that the diachromatic number of D is at most twice as large as the chromatic number of G. And this is the really interesting part. So what we do is we fix an optimal coloring, graph coloring of G with colors C1 to, up to CK. And for every one of these colors, we produce two independent copies, which are labeled C1, CII and CI2, um, which will be used as colors for the coloring of D. So these will be two, two times K possible colors. And now the idea is that this is also a typo here, that if, if you take any uh, set xi, so, so now I define the coloring of D. So what you do is you look at any set xi and you simply take the acyclic coloring of this xi, which you know exists by the definition because it's a two colorable set, with uh, two distinct colors, uh, which are simply the two independent copies of the color which was used for the word xi in the graph coloring of G. So if uh, i was colored by some color j, then xi will be colored by cj1 uh, CJ and cj2. So that's a typo here. To J or something. Um, okay, and uh, this is simply my coloring using 2K colors, and I claim that this is a good coloring that, so this, that it does not have directed cycles in one color. And to prove this, what we do is we assume by contradiction that such a cycle exists, monochromatic directed cycle, and we take it also shortest. And uh, the, the nice thing about taking, as a, taking it as a shortest cycle uh, is that it doesn't have any chords, so all the edges spent between the vertices of this cycle are really jumping only in this clockwise way. And um, then we say that I0 should be the smallest index, which uh, such that XI0 is intersected by the vertex set of the cycle. So it's the leftmost back simply intersecting 
this cycle. And now we somehow zoom into this picture and uh, make the important observation that somehow um, the cycle cannot be entirely contained in the back XI0 because XI0 was colored with two colors acyclically, so it cannot contain a monochromatic directed cycle. So the cycle must go at least uh, once uh, out uh, and must have some directed subpath which starts in the vertex uh, in XI0, goes out again, and then uh, enters at some point again. So this is the picture we have here. We have this XI0, we have some vertex U, then some directed path which is internally disjoint from XI0 and enters again into some vertex V. And uh, all this is a subset of this directed cycle. So all these vertices U and V and all these, uh, here have the same uh, color in this coloring of the, which we have defined. And this property that all these vertices have the same color uh, gives us a very nice uh, property of these vertices, which are internal, uh, internal to this directed path. Namely, and no such vertex can have both an out and an in edge going to XI0 in the diagraph B. So suppose, uh, just look at this uh, picture, suppose that such a vertex would exist, uh, which has both an out and an in edge coming from XI0. Then of course, because, uh, so in the way we define the I0, all these internal vertices are to the right of XI0. So this vertex would be containing some XJ, where J is bigger than I0. And then um, because we have this out and in edges, uh, going from this one vertex, you have edges in both directions between x i zero and x j, which means that uh, i zero and j are adjacent in G, and so that also means that the colors uh, which were used in the graph coloring are distinct. So the the, the sets of two colors which are used in the diagraph coloring of x i zero and x j they are completely disjoint. So, but the cycle intersects both sets and therefore cannot be monochromatic. So this is kind of a contradiction in this case. It cannot be that the cycle intersects both sets while having a disconnection between I0 and J in the graph G because the color sets which we use for these for this XI0 and XJ are disjoint. So for every vertex, either I have only out edges going to XI0 or only in edges going to XI0. And now what I will do is I will produce a contradiction to the maximality of XI0 by extending the two coloring of XI0 also to the directed path. So um, I simply say, if a vertex has only in edges, I color it one or with the first color used in XI0, and if it has only out edges, I color it with the second color of XI0. And the colors of the remaining vertices are chosen as in this acyclic two coloring of XI0. And now the, the, this, uh, so we define this as a superset of XI0, uh, which is of course still disjoint from all previously chosen sets X1 to up to XI0 minus one, because we only have this path lying on the right-hand side. And then this is also still an acyclic coloring because a uh, directed cycle, which intersects uh, first of all, it cannot be contained only in the vertices of this path because it is an induced directed path. We have chosen a shorter cycle, so we don't have any chords here. Um, secondly, a directed cycle uh, cannot intersect uh, both XI0 and this path because if, it, if, it, uh, if, it's, uh, if it's monochromatic. Because if it's monochromatic, then either it has color one and can only enter from XI0 to this path, or it has color two and can only leave uh, or enter XI0 from this path. So um, in both cases, the cycle could not be directed. So this actually is an ACK coloring still. And also because we have this directed path going out and back, back in again, actually it does not need to be a path. U and V could also be the same and it could be a cycle. I actually forgot to say this. Um, in any case, this uh, what we add here is like an ear addition if you do a ear decomposition of a digraph. So this is still a strongly connected set, which is larger, inclusion-wise larger than XI0, which is a contradiction. So all in all, this, this shows that you cannot have directed, monochromatic directed cycles because either they will produce an adjacent power I0 and J with different color sets, or you will uh, produce a larger X I0. And then the proof conclusion I already told you is that after we have proved this claim, if we have any diagraph which excludes the complete diagraph of T vertices as a strong minor, then its by orientation contains the complete diagraph of all of T as a, uh, of G also contains a, uh, cannot contain KT as a minor because D contains the by orientation of G as a strong minor. And so G doesn't contain KT as a minor. So we can color everything with t times log of t to the sixth color. So I hope this was understandable and um, not too longish or too short. Um, yeah, so this is uh, th this result is very simple, as you can see. But it resolves the question uh, posed by Axinovich et al for the strong minus. And also for the butterfly minus, it's uh, somehow not a difficult exercise to show that a k2t digraph, so a complete digraph of order 2 times t, contains as a butterfly minor always um, the KT. So um, this, uh, this means that, uh, sorry, um, what I want to say is that if a digraph contains a K2T as a strong minor, then it also must contain a KT as a butterfly minor. So qualitatively, these two questions are again equivalent, 
and the result also carry, carries over to this butterfly minor motion. Um, yeah, sorry to say. So um, what really um, remains open here is the case of subdivisions. And this is uh, what Abu Kiyat and I looked at in their paper. Um, because as empirically, the questions for the strong end butterfly minors they are the same as for the underrated graphs. By this result, if you improve the asymptotics uh, to a linear bound for hard wave conjecture, you also get here a linear bound, and vice versa, because the digraphs are a more general setting. If you can prove anything better for digraphs, you would also have to need, need to prove it for the underrated graphs. So that's really equivalent. Um, okay, so for the subdivisions, um, I will here I'll investigate this problem, and here the bound still remains very bad. So this is still this four to the t squared. And uh, we did not manage to improve this so far. So this is a really nice open problem written down here that uh, whether you can get any better bound than something very, uh, let's say, exponential on the diagrammatic number of a digraph, which does not contain a complete diagraph of order t as a subdivision. Or, so, so, so any polynomial function t, I think, would be very interesting. Um, but let me first say which partial results are known. Um, it's not too much, but um, it's, uh, again, similar to this minimum degree setting. So we have here probably a very difficult problem Concerning this diacritic number. Um, also, like in Mada's conjecture, where we have this existence questions for the transitive tournaments. Um, and uh, then uh, we can look at some, some more sparse acyclic diagraphs, exclude those as subdivisions, and see whether we can prove at least a polynomial bound in those cases, and then maybe try to generalize those ideas to the complete diagraphs as well. So, Abul Kiyat uh, had this general uh, result for arbitrary diagraphs F that in order to force this f as a subdivision, you need diagrammatic number four to the number of edges times the number of vertices, um, which is uh, only good if a, a of f is very small. So in, in general, this will be exponential bound. And, um, but they also looked at some sparse diagrams like oriented cycles and had, for example, the conjecture that if you have diagrammatic number, at least the number of vertices of some oriented cycle, then you can force this as a subdivision, uh, which we could prove together with uh, Leo Gishbolina and Tibor Sabo also recently. Um, and another, so these are all only results for very sparse diagrams, but they are already non, 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 non trivial. So, what is also known that you can generalize this result by Dirac that a uh, four chromatic graph contains a K4 subdivision to diagrams by saying that a dichromatic number four graph contains every tournament of order four as a subdivision. Um, so, no matter how you orient the edges. Um, this is also a generalization of this result. And then finally, the only other case we, where we can prove a polynomial bound is. Uh, Follows from what we have done for the strong minors, because similar to underrated graphs, uh, you have this that if a graph is subcubic, then the strong minors and the butterfly minors are equivalent to the uh, underrated uh, to the to the subdivision. So, for if a graph has maximum degree three, then you can actually force it by a linear diagrammatic number condition, twenty-two times the number of vertices. Um, right. Okay. So, um, as I said here, the open problem which remains is. Uh, Getting any polynomial function on the dichromatic number of KT subdivision free digraphs. I currently don't ha really have a good idea for this, but uh, I, I feel again that this is a problem which uh, where more people should think about because it's so similar to this underrated problem. It's actually a generalization of it, which was studied, for example, by uh, Bolo Bash and Tomason, uh, which average degree forces a KT subdivision, and also people have studied which chromatic number forces a KT subdivision. So it should be something should be done here as well. Now um, I can am close to concluding my talk. I, re I realize that I might have been a bit quick. Um, so um, the, the last topic I wanted to tell you is uh, about, or uh, which uh, this, the last kind of substructure I wanted to tell you about are induced subgraphs. So now I have uh, told you open problems mainly and some results for, the, for excluding a subdivision and a minor and how we can color such digraphs. But what is known concerning the generalization of this question of Jarvis and Summer? And this is a very interesting topic uh, raised by Abu Ki, Shabi, and Nazar Raza. I hope I <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce this name. Actually, I, I probably it's wrong. Um, from 2020, um, who generalizes conjecture to diagrams in a very interesting way. So, uh, so I should maybe now that I have some time, talk a bit more about the Jaffa standard conjecture again and why it makes sense. So let me maybe go very quickly back to what I had here in the beginning. Ah, right here. So the Jaffa standard conjecture again. States that if you have a graph which excludes a fixed complete graph of order k, for example, and a fixed uh, forest f as in used subgraphs, then it has bound chromatic number. So there's no concrete uh, conjecture concerning the bound because exponential bounds are required here. But um, yeah, the existence is still an open problem. And why is this somehow interesting? So the, the motivation for the Jaffa-Sandler conjecture was that uh, people wanted to uh, people study a lot uh, 
graph class is defined by a finite list of forbidden new subgraphs. So you take like 10 graphs, different kinds, and you look at the graph of the structure of graphs which do not contain any of those as a new subgraphs. And then you can ask, under which circumstances does such a graph class have bounded chromatic number? I mean, of course, some of them have, some of them don't, right? So if you exclude a clique only, for example, then it doesn't work by uh, looking at graphs of large curve and large chromatic number. But if you exclude an edge, for example, then you have no edges at all and you are calibrable with one color. So just to give you some stupid examples. Um, but uh, in general, what you can observe is that if you have such a finite list of graphs whose exclusion bounds the chromatic number, it must contain at least one forest and at least one clique. And the reason for this is that, okay, as you talk about in new subgraphs, if you like, look only at large cliques, which have very large chromatic number, the only new subgraphs they have are cliques. So if you wouldn't exclude any clique, they were, would simply not be in your class, uh, would be in your class and uh, would have large chromatic numbers. So you must exclude one clique. And secondly, why must you uh, exclude a forest? So suppose there was a contradiction that every graph which you exclude contains one cycle. Then uh, if you look at graphs of very large curve, you know that no such graph can, can, can contain any of these graphs as a subgraph because they have short cycles or bounded length cycles. And so uh, also the chromatic number of these graphs can be large because there are graphs of large curve and chromatic number. So um, this uh, motivates this graph assembly conjecture because it would state if it's correct that such a graph class has bound chromatic number if and only if you have at least one forest and at least one complete graph as an excluded and just subgraph. And now this question was generalized by Abul Khi et al. To, um, to the diagraph setting. So exactly the same question is asked here. You look at the finite list of forbidden and used subdiagraphs. So the, in the same, the subdiagraph definition uh, is, uh, is exactly the same as for the analytic graph. So we say it's induced if you take some vertex set and all arcs spend between those vertices. And you again look at such diagraph classes defined by a finite list of forbidden and used subdiagraphs and ask when do they have bounded diagrammatic number. And uh, here uh, it's more complicated. So you have more obstructions and things you must contain. You can also look at constructions of diagrams of large curve and large chromatic number, which also exist looking at random graphs, uh, similarly to the Erdős construction. And um, then you get that uh, you must uh, contain, such a set must contain at least one orientation of a forest and at least one by orientation of a forest. So what I showed you earlier with these forward backward edges, at least one uh, tournament, so an orientation of a clique and at least one bi-oriented clique. So at least one complete diagram. And um, this, uh, all, all these observations, then you can look at, uh, so these are necessary conditions which the set must, uh, which graphs the set must contain. But then on the positive side, you can also ask some similar conjectures. And uh, so these are the conjectures of Abul Khi et al, which only talk about uh, directed graphs. So the first one says that uh, if you have any oriented forest F, which is fixed and any fixed number K, then the diagraphs uh, which exclude both F and the transitive tournament of order K as a induced subgraph um, have bounded diagrammatic number. What I've wrote, written here is that uh, this set is heroic. So heroic set simply is something which bounds the diagrammatic number. So a set of F of finite, finitely many diagraphs is called it hero heroic if uh, excluding all of those leads to a diagram class of bounded diagrammatic number. And so here we have only three diagrams. We exclude a K2. Why do we do this? Because uh, excluding a K2 means uh, excluding edges in both ways between two vertices. So we only talk about oriented graphs here where edges can only go in one way. So, uh, and then we, we exclude F and a clear transit tournament of order K. So that this is heroic means that oriented graphs of excluding a forest, oriented forest and a transit tournament have bound a diagrammatic number. The second conjecture is uh, the same, also containing oriented graphs, uh, but here we exclude uh, an orientation only of a star forest. So this means a distant union of stars oriented in an arbitrary way. And lastly, we exclude a special type of a tournament, which now must not, not only be a transitive tournament, but it could also be something more general, which is known as a hero. So H must be a hero. This is a, a special type of tournament, which also exclude, includes, for example, all tournaments of order at most four, which was studied by, um, by many different authors um, in a paper which uh, asked the question, uh, which uh, subgraphs must be contained in tournaments of large chromatic number. Um, is this paper, but I, I think it doesn't make sense to list all the authors right now. I don't know them by uh, right now. Um, but um, okay, so both open problems are, of course, very nice. And I think, in particular, the first one shows that this is more or less a di direct generalization. So in the draft assembly conjecture, we exclude a forest in a clique. Here we exclude an oriented forest in an oriented clique. So this is very similar. 
And the second conjecture this doesn't have a direct generalization to the anarchic setting, um, or is not the direct generalization of the anarchic setting, but also arises from this question above. <laughs> and um, it's, it, it, so one particular question I want to emphasize to conclude my talk is, um, I mean, maybe you don't think that these are very nice questions and it sounds a bit complicated, but uh, what is really a nice question, I think, is uh, a special case of the first one, which is still open. Um, namely, if I look only at the case that f is a directed path and k is fixed, then uh, th this is still an open question whether an oriented graph of very large dichromatic number must necessarily contain either a large oriented peak and therefore also a large transit tournament. Th th these are essentially equivalent questions by Ramsey's theorem, whether you exclude any clique or exclude a transit tournament are essentially equivalent, uh, or it must contain a long induced directed path. So this sounds like a very simple question, right? So if I have digraph classes without long induced directed paths and without large cliques, let's say even if they are triangle free, we don't know whether they have found, found a direct uh, chromatic number, uh, which is, I think, quite a nice open problem, which you could keep in mind if you are interested in working on these problems. Um, yeah. This is known for anarchic graphs, by the way, by Jaffas from 1987, who proved exactly the same for anarchic graphs with a very short inductive proof, which unfortunately, as, I, as far as I, I have tried at least, does not generalize to the directed setting. Um, yeah, but uh, because they're such a nice proof somehow, I have to hope that this problem is also, also nice somehow. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. Um, please ask questions. And I'm sorry if I was, was a bit too quick or, yeah, thank you. It's a uh, it's good timing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know I've got uh, some questions on the list, but I think before going to that, I'll open it up to the audience. Can I? Is it time for question? Yes. Yes. yes go on. Thank you. Uh, hi, uh, Rafael. Thank you very hi. much for the very nice talk. I'm uh, happy to meet you. Uh, so in my first question, I'm not sure I'm, I should ask it to you because I'm working on this problem uh, right now and I'm afraid that you'll uh, solve it too quickly. But did you think about uh, induced subdivision? No, no. Okay. Yeah, I, I think I know what you are referring to, right? So there's this, for undirected draft as standard conjecture, what is known as a uh, proof by Scott, I think, yes. uh, that if you exclude uh, for any uh, tree or forest, an induced, all induced subdivisions of this particular tree and a clique, then you have found a chromatic number. So this is a partial result for Java summer conjecture where you allow subdividing. But uh, I haven't thought about it. But actually, right, it would, would also include this question with directed path as a subcase. Is, is this what you yeah. mean? Yeah. No, as yeah. you can see, I, I don't have any idea even for this question. So uh, okay. and I'm always happy to see new results. OK, thanks. Uh, so I haven't thought about uh, directed graphs too much. Maybe these questions are easy, but I'd still like to ask them, uh, mm -hmm. which is in the subgraph setting, there's, I guess, a little bit more known than this sort of thing. So for instance, that uh, every graph of a sufficiently large chromatic number has either a big clique or a triangle free graph of large chromatic number. And so I'm wondering if anything like that is known or could possibly be true in um, so uh, there is some research in this direction, but uh, actually there's a other question which you might ask first. So, um, so the, the, um, yeah, so what you're asking is there's also this problem, I think, if I remember correctly by, is it a conjecture by, there's some conjecture on this topic also whether you can, if you have a graph of large chromatic number, does it contain a subgraph of uh, large chromatic number and large curve, right? Or something right, like that. yes, yeah. And this is also open. And then if you think right. about the same question for digress, which I started doing and then realized that it was difficult, is, um, yeah, if you have a, a digraph of large diagrammatic number, does it necessarily contain a subdiagraph without uh, with large diagrammatic number and out, without short directed cycles? And you ask about the triangle free setting, which is also interesting, but I think first one needs to ask about the diagonal free setting, right? If you think about my idea of the symmetric diagrams, how they generalize graphs, then you must think about, uh, take a symmetric digraph, right? Or, uh, or let's say, take any digraph whose diagrammatic number is large, does it contain a diagon free, so a, a, a K2 free subdiagraph of large diagrammatic number, where, which, is, which is only oriented? Can you somehow, if you have these anti parallel edges, throw always one away and still keep large diagrammatic number? And actually, if you think about this a bit, then you see that the question is equivalent to a conjecture 
by Erdos and Norma Lara, which they raised more or less immediately after they uh, had this uh, had the, these first papers on this, uh, the diachronic number. This is really nice. So I actually can also say this. this is, uh, uh, there's one paper on this by Boyan Moha and uh, Hui Wu, or if I pronounce this correctly, uh, which proved a fractional version of this conjecture. And it says that any graph that there exists a function f, such that any graph of chromatic number f of k can be oriented in such a way that uh, this, this orientation has dichromatic number k, at least k. So uh, right. this somehow would be the first case, I think, of this question, which I which is still uh, widely unknown. I think it's unknown whether a graph of very large chromatic number can be already always oriented in such a way that it has dichromatic number at least three, if I'm not mistaken. So this is very difficult. <laughs> But it's a nice problem. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know about uh, this conjecture of Mater's that you mentioned and uh, being even known for trees. That uh, seems yeah, surprising. Again, it's probably even harder than. So I somehow said, okay, if this is even not known, then maybe let's. Right, because uh, somehow triangle three would also answer this because you can look at the symmetric orientation of things. I mean, okay, you can only exclude triangles, but not diagonals, but this is then a bit weird, maybe. I don't know. Right. Uh... Well, also, I wanted to say that uh, I really enjoyed the, the proof that you showed. So thank you again. <laughs>